In all of our previous videos, we've seen some relatively straightforward examples. To make sure that we can really drive home what's going on here, we're going to do a more complex example here. Not necessarily horribly complex, but complex enough that we will see the distinctions between what we are doing and sort of the naive approach some people might accidentally stumble into. So, just as we've always done in the past, we begin by analyzing the innermost loop. In this case, that's a for loop. That for loop here takes c i squared time because the inside takes constant time and it runs i squared times. To analyze the while loop, we're going to do that again in purple, so we'll highlight it in purple to let the reader know exactly what we're doing. Off to the side, we're going to keep track of the number of iterations and the value of the variable for the while loop, in this case that being i. And now we need to say what is i initialized to be. i is initialized to be n. Ooh, that's interesting. And then we're updating it by multiplying by 5. So we have, after one iteration, it's the previous value multiplied by 5. After two iterations, it's that value multiplied by 5 yet again. I'll write that as 5 squared, n. After three iterations, it's the value above multiplied by 5. Let's write that as 5 cubed times n. So after, let's do gamma iterations so we can see our different choices of letters. It looks like 5 to the gamma times n, I hope you can see. It's 5 cubed, 5 squared, 5, and then 5 to the 0. So looking a heck of a lot like 5 to the gamma. It stops when our pattern, 5 to the gamma times n, is equal to the stopping condition, in this case n cubed. And just as we've seen with all of our examples in the past, we're going to change it from just gamma to some other specially signified gamma, call it gamma prime. Solve that for gamma prime. To solve, do that, we divide by n on both sides and get 5 to the gamma prime equals n squared. Take a log base 5 of both sides, and we have gamma prime equals log base 5 of n squared. So we now know what that is. We can now work on building our summation to analyze, as we have done in the past. So t of n is equal to the sum over the values of i of the cost of the body of the while loop, in this case that being ci squared. And now we recontextualize that sum as a sum over gamma, going from gamma equals zero to gamma prime, of ci squared, but i in terms of gamma is five to the gamma times n. So we replace i with five to the gamma times n, and then that gets squared. Notice we replace i with that expression, and the whatever operations were being performed on i are still being performed on that expression. Just as we've done a couple of times by now, we're going to replace gamma prime with log base 5 of n squared. We now have a summation analyzed. We're theoretically now out of while loop territory, and we're in our much more comfortable summation analyzing uh, realm of existence. So we need to do whatever algebra we can here. We're going to factor out the c. Maybe not yet. Let's actually hold off on that. We do gamma equals 0 to log base 5 of n squared. I'm squaring a multiplication, and you can write that as both parts squared separately. So this is times 5 to the 2 gamma n squared. I can rewrite this as c n squared by factoring that out, the sum from gamma equals 0 to log base 5 of n squared of 5 to the 2 gamma, which I can write as 25 to the gamma. When you have multiplication in the exponent, you can just do the exponents in either order. So we do 5 to the 2 to the gamma, which is 25 to the gamma. And now, having done all of this, factoring out the cn squared and simplifying the 5 to the 2 gamma, we can now use our formula for a finite geometric sum, as we've seen a couple of times in the past. So this is equal to cn squared times the common ratio to the top bound, log base 5 of n squared, plus 1, minus 1, divided by the common ratio, 25, minus 1. And now, I need to just do algebra to simplify this, to try to determine the complexity. This is a closed form expression, we weren't bounding, so all we need to do is work our way down to a closed form expression. This is equal to 25 minus 1 is 24, so I've got cn squared divided by 24, times, I'll rewrite this as 25 to the log base 5 of n squared, times 25 to the 1, minus 1. I can now use a very handy log trick that will show up a bunch of times while we analyze while loops and recurrences. So I'm going to keep everything the same, but with that 25 to the log 5 of n squared, you can actually swap 
the base of the exponent with the inside of the log. So I can write this as n squared to the log base 5 of 25 times 25, then minus 1. And then log base 5 of 25 is 2. So this is equal to cn squared divided by 24 times n squared, and then that log simplifies to 2, times 25, minus 1. Then finishing up our algebra, we have cn squared divided by 24 times quantity 25n to the fourth minus 1. So we have something that looks like n squared times something that looks like n to the fourth. Hopefully you can look at that and go, yeah, I bet that that's in theta of n to the sixth. So thus, t of n is in theta of n to the sixth, which is my final complexity. And just as we've done in the past, maybe we go back and label our steps just so we can identify what the heck we were doing along the way. So at the start, we replace our i squared with our gamma expression. So this is re-express in terms of gamma. We then do algebra a bunch. This is algebra. Then algebra and linearity to factor out the cn squared. And then we use our finite geometric sum formula. Finite geo sum. And then all of these steps are algebra. Which that algebra can get quite messy in some of these problems. But it's still just algebra. It's stuff that you've hopefully done enough in the past that you can do it. And it, well, however many steps and you need to do along the way is however many steps you need to do along the way. So this is a bit of a harder example symbolically. We noticed that we had to do a lot more algebra along the way, but the process remained the same. We start by writing a sum over the values of i of the cost of the body and then rewrite that in terms of our while loop variable. In this case, we had gamma. In many of our previous problems, we had k. That choice of variable doesn't matter. You can make whatever symbol you want. There's nothing sacred about k or gamma. Hopefully, after having seen, I don't know, nine examples of while loops, you start to get the idea of how you analyze them. You want to write an iteration table, and then sometimes you need to do this sort of difficult stuff with writing as a summation, which involves some reworking. That only occurs when the while loops inside doesn't take constant time. With our first couple of examples, it took constant time, so those were nice and easy. Then we start to see these more complex examples later.